Alrighty, welcome back everyone. It is Laughing Games here. I am back and it is time for another StarCraft 2 Alpha Star replay cast. Today marks the beginning of the end of our Alpha Star StarCraft 2 series. Excitingly though, we have got Alpha Star, the final, the best iteration. We've saved some of these replays for the end. So it's going to be Tip Top Alpha Star taking on a Masters Terran player in our video today. Kairos Junction is going to be the map, which these two will duke it out. Uh, yeah, this is Alpha Star playing against players that were high up on the ladder that are uh, very talented. So I imagine we'll see some much more serious, straightforward games. Uh, and yeah, I'm just excited to see uh, Alpha Star at his best. I know that I've watched a lot of the best iterations of Alpha Star in the past, but it, it's been too long, basically, is what I'm saying. So it's darn exciting to be casting this Alpha Star iteration again. And uh, yeah, it it's gonna be it's gonna be good. I think uh, the next the next uh, few videos that we do featuring this. But yeah, the beginning of the end. Who'd have thought we'd have made it? Uh, made it this far casting casting just alpha star i figured that people would be people like you guys would be interested maybe for like a video or two and then it would just just sort of fall off but no you guys kept the interest going and that's why i kept commentating this ai as far as the build goes from alpha star we've got a cyber core into nexus or we've got a nexus into cyber core after a probe scout so a pretty standard protoss opening all the while the masters player Going to be tossing out a Reaper, getting a Command Center on the way. So, good stuff there. But, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, seeing as how this is, this this kind of marks the beginning of the end, and that Alpha Star has got six probes in gas, or, hold on, let's see, six probes, nine workers in gas so far this game. Let's go for nine likes on this video. Uh, leave a like for, uh, for continuing on into some awesome Alpha Star matches towards the end. We have got a Reaper now going to be jumping up on the cliff. Going to be uh, scouting out here. Going to get into the main base of Alpha Star. We'll see if he's able to grab a probe or not. Good good pull away by Alpha Star. Getting that probe away from the damage. And oh, it almost gets us around on the Reaper. Looks like the Reaper will barely escape, but doesn't manage to net itself a probe. So, not great, not terrible. Uh, did the Reaper spot that Stargate? Not quite. So that's a bit unfortunate for the Masters player. He will need to scout that out at some point. Now we see Alpha Star just getting out an extra Adept. The AI is uh, is going to be looking really good in these games, so I'm going to try and keep a good eye on it. So the Adept's going to be chasing down this Reaper. Does the Reaper even spot the Stargate? Oh my gosh, I think... I, okay, it just barely got scouted, it looks like. Yes, the Stargate just barely scouted by the Masters player. Alpha Star gonna keep making workers as per usual but now moving across the map with its adept it's got the oracle on the way what does the masters player have behind this looks like he's making a couple of hellions uh hellions not bad at all against protoss but uh this is this is not like a super quick hellion build so these adepts are actually going to get on in here marine loads into the bunker it looks like the scv actually gets saved in the bunker that's a good job however yeah we see uh two hellions does not win out against two adepts even with a few units supporting it Looks like the Adept then shades into the main base as Hellion is tasked with pursuing it down. The Masters player is doing a good job microing his SCVs away. And it looks like this Adept may very well get dealt with, cleaned up, and killed. Yes, it does. But now the question the question remains, what is there to deal with this Oracle? And I think the answer is going to be not a lot. The Masters player has already got a couple of softened up SCVs too, which will be very easy targets. Alpha Star going to set to work killing off SCVs. Looks like the natural base has been cleaned up from the Adepts, but yeah, lots of damage being dealt to the Terran as long as this Oracle has got energy. Uh, the Medivac can maybe be helping these SCVs in the main base, but they're pretty much just forsaken at this point. Now we see the Masters player going to be moving across the map with his Hellions, trying to get some damage done. Uh, we'll see how well Alpha Star will be able to clean this up. It's going into Phoenix. It's getting up a third base. The Hellions are being brought back, though, by simply one Adept. The Masters player really needs to get some damage done to Alpha Star this game. Like, the AI doesn't actually have much at all to defend against these Hellions. The two Oracles, one of them's really out of energy. Uh, where's the other one at? Looks like the other one is, is still moving around. One of them gets recalled. 
But these Hellions are now going to be moving across the map. So there's just one Stalker really here to deal with it. A Phoenix will be able to lift up one of the Hellions. A uh, good pro block actually blocking the Hellions from getting any counter damage done. And so it looks like that these Hellions are going to be really stressed to try and get enough damage done. The Orc activates his Pulsar Beam with just enough energy. Kills off one of the Hellions. These Hellions are getting some shots off. The Masters player that will have everything dealt with. And I think, I think him being dragged back by that Adept was a little bit too much. The fact that he was just pulled home by that Adept. The Hellions didn't get across the map very quickly. And then, of course, he didn't really defend against the Oracles, using 11 workers, only killing 6. And, of course, we know how good Alpha Star's macro is, just queuing up those probes for days. Uh, we see, yeah, these Phoenix are now going to be flying on in, just scouting out oracles as well gonna be able to do a little bit of harassment and the masters player hasn't even got up a missile turret hasn't got really any anti-air to deal with this as a matter of fact he's got three marines against these oracles really no answer to them whatsoever another marine pops out on the wrong side of town and it looks like this masters player is just being completely dealt with medivac gets picked off gg gets called alpha star is able to take the first match uh, as it would the final iteration. I think we're going to be seeing quite a few Alpha Star wins. We'll see if, uh, if humans can get a couple more wins on the board, though, before the end of this series. All right, so Alpha Star looked good as expected, seeing as how it was even better than most of the Alpha Stars we've been watching lately. Uh, we just had ourselves a Protoss taking on a Terran. Now we're going to be having... Alpha Star playing Terran, taking on Zerg, so a good old TVZ, which is always exciting. I think it's going to be a tall order for this Zerg player, as uh, Alpha Star is pretty darn relentless when it comes to punishing, punishing the bugs. Alright, so, Kairos Junction, going to be the map, again. But, uh, yeah, should be, should be a good one. Okay. Like we've got a barracks and a gas for Alpha Star as far as the build goes. Normal opening for the Zerg, so no cheese or anything like that. No crazy cheese. We've also got this Zerg player scouting out for uh, scouting out. Has its overlord moving around, looking looking around, seeing what seeing what's good. Uh, it's a bit of a shame that we never got to see so, see like a bunch of the Alpha Star practice games, which it was Alpha Star against Alpha Star. Uh, so I, th I think that that's a bit of a shame, as it would have been fun to see, like, Alpha Star getting trained against cannon rushes by just getting cannon rushed <laughs> a ton. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case, though. Who knows? Maybe one day. For now, though, build-wise, we've got a Reaper on the way for Alpha Star. We've got an Orbital Command finishing on or getting started. Orbital PC, the usual Terran opening. Yeah, these overlords really scouting out for the Masters player, so not having a lot of trust, which is probably fair. Terran players will proxy barracks you all the way up from Bronze to Grandmaster League to GSL Code S. Alright, so the Zerg starting to produce his drones. He is going to have to contend with this Reaper, so he fires up his feelings, gets his queen popping out. And Alpha Star just goes into Marine, into a factory behind this. The usual sort of Terran opening. And we'll see how well Alpha Star is going to micro this Reaper, if it's able to get some real damage done or not. We have seen Alpha Star's Reapers just cause chaos uh, to actual players' bases. Ling's going to try and deal with this Reaper, one taking a few shots. Good micro from the Masters player, so as expected, even though that these players going up against Alpha Star are Masters players, they're probably players that haven't put in the time to get Grandmaster, because you got to play a certain amount of matches. Or they could... Or they could be uh, could be players who do leave leaguing and things like that. So it is notable to say that these Masters players can actually be very, very good. And Alpha Star actually just loses its Reaper, just like that, to the Queen, to the Lings. Doesn't get a single Ling, doesn't get a single drone. I mean, it gets a scout off at the, at the main base, being like, oh, hey, that's usual Zerg stuff. But uh, I think that's actually quite good for the Masters player, taking out the Reaper very early on in a TVZ. Gives the Zerg free reign. If the Zerg decides to go aggressive, that's always an option. If uh, the Zerg just wants to drone his face off, that's also an option. And right now we see Alpha Star actually building a bunker on the high ground. That's interesting. 
I wonder if this is in reaction to the to Alpha Star losing its Reaper, just being like, okay, I don't have that scouting in case you are throwing up a very aggressive Roach Warren or something like that. And so, yeah, is this just a defensive bunker that Alpha Star chooses to do when it loses it, its Reaper? For now, we see the Hellions for Alpha Star diving on in. The Ling speed isn't done yet, so these are actually just the first few Hellions moving across the map. Drones will surround. They are going to get on top of these Hellions. Oh, one of them does sort of sneak on out. It's like uh, we have seen two drones go down. So two drones for two Hellions, not bad. There's actually no queen in the main base. So this Hellion could very well get a bit more damage done targeting down some drones. Uh, this is making the Masters player really work. So he's actually starting to float up a bit of money. This is not an ideal situation at all. The Hellion kills off yet another drone. So four drones for two Hellions. All of a sudden things are looking a lot better. We see the Masters player was planning on going for a big Roach attack and is still planning it. But I feel like his plan has been slowed down a little bit. Alpha Star has now got more Hellions moving across the map. These Roaches should be out in time to deal with them, but there's a chance they can still get a lot of damage done. The Hellions move on up. They're not going to stop to shoot that Creep Tumor. They are just on a mission to kill off some drones. Good Roach Block able to just catch and kill off these Hellions. Now Alpha Star has got to be focused 100% on the defense. Has two bunkers on the high ground. Has got another one going up in the natural. Silly supply depot placement there. AI still not really understanding that, but I do think Alpha Star should be fine to hold this aggression. A lot of lings are being made though by the Masters player. Gonna try and break Alpha Star. We'll see if it's gonna happen. If these Ravagers will be able to cross the ball down the wall, let the lings in. There is gonna be the one tank, probably two tanks, in position for Alpha Star. But these roaches can put a lot of hurt on the Terran player. And now we see Ravagers stepping forward, eating a tank shot for starters. A lot more Ravagers coming on in, though. Going to be able to cross the ball down these depots like it's nothing. So those will fall. Alpha Star not supply blocked, however, just got a very solid wall behind this. Another bunker going up. More depots. Is there an Overlord that's going to give high ground vision for the beach tank? That hasn't been seen yet. It looks like the approach that the Masters player has taken here is a very slow one as far as breaking this, but now we see he is going to go on in. The Ling's moving forward. The tank's going to deal some friendly fire. The Ravagers are really clumped up versus these Siege Tanks. One of them does get Grosabal down, however. Does the second fall? The answer is not quite, and it looks like Alpha Star has held the Masters player's aggression. More Ling's were being uh, rallied out, or a couple more anyway, but in the end, great hold by Alpha Star. The Masters player is forced to go into drones behind this. And this was a failed all-in. And uh, I think that that really might come down to just the fact that Alpha Star kind of bought time with those initial Hellions running around the Zerg space. So that was actually really phenomenal. Now, Alpha Star has got a Banshee going to be moving out on the map. Cloak is being researched. It's a ways off, though. Uh, so the Banshee is not going to just have free reign. These Queens can potentially chew this Banshee away, and they should be able to, but in comes the Banshee, potentially just going to kill off one of that in that injured Ravager. Why not pop it off? Uh, Ravagers are pretty darn expensive. A drone going to potentially be a victim? No, not quite. Queen's shooing this Banshee away. So the Zerg not actually going to take too much damage from these Banshees, but Alpha Star is still in a pretty darn good spot, I'd say, this game. Those extra barracks getting up. The third base has now landed. The worker count is even compared to that of its opponent. And uh, yeah, Alpha Star seems to be in a pretty good spot and is loving bunkers this game, by the way. It throws up a supply depot, throws up a bunker right next to it. Uh, Alpha Star just uh, playing pretty defensive this game. So uh, it seemed to have a really good read that aggression was coming from the very start with bunkers going up on the high ground and an adequate defense. Further on, Drone does save itself, popping into that hatchery. It says, oh god, a Banshee, I better better hide there. The Masters player, seeing that the Banshees are coming in too, cancels that creep spreading. Uh, this fourth base could be under fire, however, and I get the feeling that these Banshees will be able to cancel it, no problem. If you're the Masters Zerg, I think you just gotta cancel it, maybe throw up a hatchery down towards the south, so you still have that base coming out. Uh, these Banshees just being a bit of a pain. Uh, looks like he did send a drone down there, but he hasn't started the base up yet, so he does need to get that going up. We need to see the Masters player just getting ready for whenever Alpha Star decides to attack, because it is going to be that mass siege tank stim pack, so mass marine, mass tank composition for Alpha Star. We've got 1-1 one, one on the way, we've got centrifugal hooks, a little reconstitution on the way, and yeah, 
things seem to be going pretty darn good for Alpha Star. If we do ju do just take a look at the supply, I say look at the supply. Uh, Queen's gonna try and shoo away the Banshees. But for now, yeah, this does look like the Masters player is gonna have a hard time holding on. Of course, he is getting centrifugal hooks, so he will have that Baneling speed. And we have seen Alpha Star take some very, very big Baneling connections in the past. And I, I personally welcome seeing Alpha Star go up against mass Banelings. Uh, for now, though, the Masters player, his economy is just not that good. He's making a lot of units, I guess, anticipating an attack coming. So I think that is the correct decision for the Zerg player saying, like, right, I can't just go up to, like, the 80, 90 drone economy that Zergs these days really have been liking. I just gotta sort of bite my tongue, hold on, defend against the attack that's gonna be coming, uh, or don't tell me he's gonna go on the offensive. He definitely can't go on the offensive. Uh, Alpha Star is now starting to move out on the map. Alpha Star doesn't actually have combat shield with these Marines. But oh boy, the tanks are sieging up in range of these units. So many Zerglings that were morphing into Banelings are just gonna die. That is a disaster for the Masters player. Losing all those units he is gonna have these Banelings finishing up, but he does not want to be off creep with this Roach Ravager composition. He's gonna just try and swing around towards the, the Zerg's third base, which could actually work with all these Marines and tanks just kind of having to awkwardly run on in. The bunker's being repaired, but and there's a few Banelings out. The Marines don't even have the combat shield just yet, but there's simply too much Terran. Crocibiles are gonna go down, hit some of the tanks. Banelings roll forward, but there's simply not enough of them. And GG gets called as the Masters player really overcommits there. Uh, I think whether he could even have won this game was really questionable from the start, uh, but it really was, it really was clear once he decided to move out and take the fight on Alpha Star's terms, in a sense, on Alpha Star's side of the map, that it really was destined to fail. The tanks getting big shots off on those Lings as they were morphing into Banelings thinned out that count. And so, yeah, really well done by Alpha Star. Just uh, was planning on going for a killer attack. Maybe the Masters player could have held on. It would have been very questionable, probably not realistically, but he definitely would have had better odds if he had chosen to play more defensive, maybe try and catch Alpha Star as it's approaching this ramp or approaching the third base. Uh, yeah. Anyway, GG gets called. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a very fun start to the end series of Alpha Star. We are officially in the end game now. But if you do enjoy these videos, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, join the Discord, which is linked in the description down below. That Discord's gonna, gonna be around for quite a while. And then, of course, if you do enjoy... Uh, the content and you want to support it, consider becoming a member to support the channel. I'll see you guys next time. My name is Laughing Games. Thanks so much for watching.